Right. There once was a tall, skinny boy who loved softball with all his heart. But because of his slight build and his underdeveloped athletic ability, he was one of those boys fated to be chosen to last for every game he played. Then, one day, all that changed. As a boy, I played team softball in elementary and junior high school. Two captains were chosen, and they in turn selected the players they wanted to play on their team. To be chosen fourth or fifth wasn't all that bad, but to be regulated to a position in the far outfield and chosen last was downright awful. I would know because I was there. How I hoped the ball would never be hit my way, for surely I would try and catch it, I would drop it. Runners would score, and my team would be mad and I would be let down. All, as though it were just yesterday, I remember the day when all that changed in my life. The game started out as I have described. I was chosen last. I made my sorrowful way with my head hung out into the deep pocket of right field and watched as the other team filled the bases with runners. Suddenly, two batters went down on strikes. Then the next batter hit a mighty drive right at me. The ball was coming off to my left. Was it beyond my reach? I raced for the spot where I thought it would land, uttered a silent prayer, and reached out with my cupped hands, and I caught the ball. I surprised even myself, and my team won the game. This bolstered, my, this bolstered my confidence, inspired my desire to work harder, and led me from that last to be chosen position to become a value contributor to my team. The young boy, who this was, would later grow to become Thomas S. Monson, who now millions know as the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Along with the softball success story, the May 2008 New Era has an article entitled, Called to Serve, Man of Faith, Man of Compassion. This article is an excellent view of what Thomas S. Monson was like as a boy. It, he was born in Salt Lake City in August, on August 21st, 1927, right before the onset of the Great Depression. His character was revealed, revealed at an early age, as he even, for example, when he made the big play, he focused on that other boy, who, like him, was chosen last every time, and he helped him develop his talents. He learned caring and sensitivity from his parents. Since he had lived during the Great Depression, tramps and transients inevitably made his way to their home. He remembers that his mother treated them all like invited and honored guests and made them feel welcome at the dinner table. Although times were tough during the Great Depression, his family was one that managed to find joy in the simple things of life. They spent their summer vacations at a cabin in near Provo, Utah, where he developed a lifelong love for swimming and fly fishing. Then came his midlife to his call to apostleship. As President Monson grew to, into a young man, his biography on his official website, thomasmonson.org, gives a detailed account of the, his actions and his accomplishment during the stage of his life. At age 18, he joined the Navy and served during the end of World War II. Following his service, he married the, his wife, Frances Beverly Johnson, in the Salt Lake City Temple on October 7, 1948. At the extremely young age of 22, he was called to be a bishop over a ward that had over a thousand people, including 85 widows. These widows would later go on to play a major part in his life, as every Christmas he created a tradition of going to see every single one of these 85 widows. This tradition continued for over 48 years until the death of the last one in 1998. He went on to attend the University of Utah and graduated cum laude in business. From there, he went on to earn his MBA from BYU and three honorary doctorates from Brigham Young University, Salt Lake City Community College, and the University of Utah. Then came his call to apostleship. On the official news site of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, newsroom.lds.org, it discusses President Monson's call to apostleship and, its pre and his presidency in its leader biography sections. 
On October 4, 1963, Thomas S. Monson was called at the extremely young age of 36 to become an apostle. He is one of the youngest men ever called to such a position. He served in the First Presidency for over 27 years under Presidents Ezra Taft Benson, Howard W. Hunter, and President Gordon B. Hinckley. Following the death of President Hinckley on February 3rd, 2008, he was called to become the President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. His wonderful example of hard work is evident in the many temples that he has helped to plan, to dedicate, and to build in over just barely the year that he has been President. I hope you guys all enjoyed learning a little bit more about President Thomas S. Monson, and I would like to challenge each one of you to go out and to try and just follow his example just a little bit more to remember his his hard work and his caring that he had for those in need and to try and apply that in your own lives and i would like to challenge each one of you personally to the next time you see that person being chosen last for the team that you will do something about it